So Larry, there's been some breaking news from the USDA concerning the coronavirus food assistance program. Now, you made a video about a month ago when they first came out with the whole program, but here recently they've come out with a whole bunch of new information. What's going on? What is what is the details that we need to get out of this? Well, John, as you mentioned, uh, I think it's been like five weeks ago on a Friday afternoon, there was an announcement of this $19 billion uh food assistance program. And so what happened was they said, we'll be announcing. And, and in that video, I made a remark that they were going to start taking applications in late May and then try to late May, early June, uh, start sending out checks. And actually I, I was guilty. I re, I went back and looked at that video mm-hmm. and whenever it said, you know, middle, late May for applications and late May, early June checks, and at the end of it, I qualified it and said, check-wise, depend on late June. And uh, I think that's going to be correct. So uh, what I want to do here today is give an update from that video and go through some detailed information. We're going to be looking at some, some screenshots. But more importantly, when we get this done, this is to make each farmer aware of, you know, if, I, if I'm a cattle farmer, What's, you know, what's in it for me, you know, if I'm into wool or dairy, uh, you know, you know, what am I looking at? Right. So this is more the mechanics, the, the, the numbers, but also what's going to happen is that on May 26th, they're going to start taking applications. So before we did this video, not only had to, are we looking at what's on the internet? Uh, and as I said before, you know, I'm a farmer with I have, I raise, you know, Angus beef. Um, so I have cow calf pairs. So I'm interested too. Right. This affects you. Right. And so in this video, I'm kind of like one of us, uh, we, the farmers, but in doing it, I've actually been talking to some of the, the, uh, the farm service agency locations. And as we do this video, they've received a zero training. So my first concern before we do a deep dive into this is the fact that we get next Tuesday. And, you know, if you're watching this video after, you know, May 26th, this goes all the way to August 28th. Wow. So so there's a plenty of time here. Uh, they're only going to be, you know, they originally talked about one check. They're going, they've got a whole formula. We'll get to that later. But they're not going to just push out like they did with the PPP, just push all the money out and run out of money. So... My, my first remark is we've got, we've got a little time here. And so the goal of today is to say, based on what type of farmer I am, then, you know, again, what kind of benefit because of COVID-19 and because of the market drop, you know, what, what kind of numbers am I looking at? And then in our next video, uh, once they release the calculator, we're going to be doing a presentation on the calculator because when you go then in or some of this, a lot of this will be done virtual. You're going to, you're going to be calling into the, you know, you know, farm service agency, mm-hmm. your local one. Uh, Laura, you did a video on, you know, the one about be sure and get signed up, get your email there, get your direct deposit in there. Uh, so please go out and, you know, see Laura's video kind of introducing this video. You can see that below. Uh, but I think the important thing is for us to get a plan in this video and then walk through it and and really understand what we're looking at. But the thing we got to also understand, you know, think about it. If and, I, and I'm on behalf of farm service agent, you know, that is that think about it. We're toward the end of a week and, you know, Tuesday, they start taking applications, and what happens is they're just now getting trained. Literally, a business day before, they're taking the applications. Mm, wow. So, so that's kind of where I'm going is, one, we're going to help you estimate what you should be getting. Now, that will be in the calculating video that follows this video, but it's not, it's not to test the, the, you know, the farm service agent it's to assist and make sure we're in the ballpark. And over the last two or three days since this was announced, we've been talking to different um, county agencies. And we're getting a very different 
feedback on what counts and what doesn't count. So this is kind of like any other new program. It's not we don't trust the farm service agent. It's the fact we want to assist. So we want better information. And we also want to, again, double check to see if this is reasonable. Sure. Because, you know, I look at these videos as almost like an advocacy. It's an advocate what's right. You know, what, what should I as the farmer receive? You know, I, I want what's mine. You know, that's, that's one of the things about American farming. You know, they'll, they'll farm 24 hours a day and, you know, lose everything in a drought or a natural disaster. Well, this is a different natural, this is, this is a natural disaster. But the thing about it is, is, again, as we go through this, this is to educate and to help guide through this storm, so to speak. So with that, uh, I've, I've got my little tablet here. And I'm going to really start to look at the areas. And uh, if, we, if we look here on the screen, uh, the areas of, of the program, I'll move this down a little bit to make sure everybody can see. And in the future, I'll refer to this as the, either the Food Assistance Program or the Coronavirus Food Assistance Program or as the CFAP. So it's all the same. So looking at this list, it says the eligible commodities include... Uh, non specialty crops, barley, uh, granola, corn, cotton. It's your normal thing as you really think as a crop. You know, you think of soybeans and oats and corn, et cetera. So there, there is a, a grid and, and shows what, you know, what was the decline. Uh, then we'll look at wool, livestock, dairy, and then especially crops. And actually, since our last video, most of the questions I'm getting is out of these specialty crops. You know, fruit, vegetables, nuts, and and then others. So, uh, and oh, by the way, Laura, uh, whenever I get over to the specialty crops, there's many of these that I'm growing in my garden. There's only a problem. We eat them. So, for example, I have asparagus, I have broccoli, I have cabbage, I have carrots, I have, you know, sweet corn, cucumbers planted, eggplant. So I have a whole bunch of these. But the important thing, and I've actually got some calls on this, people are trying to say, well, I've got this, do I qualify? You know, it's called you have to be in the business of. Mm -hmm. And so I think that's that's very important. But I, again, we're going to kind of, through this presentation, we're going to start going in different areas here and give you an overview of, you know, what, you know, what are you looking at as far as some kind of payment from the government for COVID-19 uh, impact on our losses from the market, you know. And uh, I can speak personally. Um, you know, what happened was is that I thought the prices would be dropping. I had some animals that I was to the point of what I raised them to. So back in March, it wasn't a matter of knowing about this program. I had to sell, you know, right at 300 yearlings because in my program, the the feed and the cost was getting to a point that it was greater than the pounds gained from that, and they needed to be moved on to backgrounding or to a feedlot. So when I pulled the trigger on that, when I actually said I've got to sell, it wasn't based on was it a good price. It wasn't a good price, you know, because the, the slaughterhouses were closing down and the feedlots. This is a whole process, you know. So feedlots are shipping to, you know, to to the cattle in, you know, from people like myself into the feedlot. The feedlot then ships it on over, you know, to um, to the slaughterhouses. And when they closed down, it was just like plugging up a pipe. It just stopped. And in doing so, um, the prices just tanked. Mm -hmm. So this is this is all about, you know, again directly related to COVID nineteen. So with that, what I like to do is actually I'm going to um, uh, switch over to the, the detail. Uh, but the other thing I want to say, and I'll repeat this at the end of the program, is that from what we, I, I kind of want to step back again and look at the process from start to, to the end as an overview. And the reason why I'm doing that, because from what we can tell from talking to different uh, you know, farm service agents 
is and and again they don't they're not always consistent in their answer, but it's kind of like a you know it's kind of like a dartboard. There's a you throw darts at it and right there is a whole bunch of darts focused right there. So that's got to be pretty close. So this is not where I've got some connection to Washington, but this is dealing with the people that do this every day for sure. a living. Um, is that what's going to happen? Many of these are going to be by telephone, or you can go directly online to the calculator. And you're going to start, they're saying within a week, but let's say a couple of weeks, you're going to start getting checks. You know the reason why I'm pausing? Because it's not the end of the story. Getting the check is to help farmers survive. But late summer, early fall, will start the audit cycle. They're going to come out. And for example, if you say I sold 50 you know, yearlings, right. You better have a receipt for yeah. selling fifty yearlings. Mm -hmm. uh, if they, you know, they're not going to check every farmer, right? They're, you know, they're not going to check every corn bin, but they're going to spot check. And based on that, if compliance is there, then what happens is the other farmers may not see as many audits. So this is not just a free pass. So you're going to, so again, stepwise, uh, starting on May twenty sixth, and again, this runs through I believe August twenty eighth. You're going to be able to go online, or you may be able to do a phone call. I know a couple of the local offices, they're creating a list for callbacks, and there'll be interviews, and they'll fill the, the forms out for you, and then you get a check. But again, that's to get the money where it's needed now, but there's going to be audits late summer, early fall. And so, again, it's going to be show me your sales between the period we're going to talk about here and show me your inventory. You know, if it's your cattle, I want to go count them. If it's your corn, I want to see what did you have stored. If you didn't store it, then you sold it. And so, uh, again, a uh, word of caution. Document, document, and as I say in tax law, the third most important thing is document. And then, you know what? You're okay. So with that, let's go and take a look. i tell you what I'd like to do. I'm probably going to go over to livestock. You know, um, I, I've grown a, I've, I've grown a little bit of corn. You know, I grew up on a pig farm. So I know some of these others, but, uh, I think starting with livestock kind of, it, it's pretty clean. And, and, uh, when we go over into crops, we've got a whole list of different types of crops. So, um, uh, so let's, let's go, I'm going to move this over to we're going to look at, again, on the usdafarmers.gov, we're going to look at what they're telling us is eligible livestock. So, you know, what's eligible? It's the available to livestock producers who have an ownership interest in eligible livestock that suffered a 5% or greater decline in the results of COVID-19. So, um, and this could be, again, from um, unexpected surplus, or disrupted market. And again, a good example because it's been on the news. And again, part of the reason why I'm doing this one first is, you know, we, we've seen in South Dakota where whatever it's five, six, seven hundred people, you know, they sh literally shut down, wow. you know, the, uh, the butchering and stuff because they had five, six, seven hundred individual people that had been exposed and had COVID-19. Well, they're standing shoulder to shoulder processing meat. So, uh, you know, at one point in time, there was 20-some slaughterhouses shut down. Well, that is a disruption, and that's just literally stopping mm -hmm. the bug. And again, as I mentioned earlier, it stops the butchering, which stops taking it from the feedlots to the butcher shop. And then what happens is that stops because those animals have to be done something with, and uh, some of those animals are, are being killed. It just stops when the slaughterhouse is stopped. It stopped the shipments from the feedlot to the slaughterhouse. It stopped the shipments from the farmer to the feedlots. Mm -hmm. And it just keeps backing up. And in the last video, I made a remark about you know having a client that was literally milking the cows during the day. And when the day was over, because there was no so-called pipeline, there was right. no connection of hauling the milk, you know, to to you know, 
to the market. Right. There's nothing he could do with it. They were saying, well, yeah, it was. He opened a valve and let it run down yeah. the hillside. Yeah. So, you know, and people don't understand this. Well, you've got, you know, uh, you've got to realize this whole food chain is just as important as healthcare. Because if you can't get the food there, then what happens is we got another issue. So the sad thing is the food cost is going up, and yet milk's being poured down the hillside. Animals are being put to sleep. Yeah, you know? mm, so and much part, waste. And, and part of this program is actually reimbursing for proper disposal of animals mm. that should really be on the tables because we got people in this country that are starving. Yeah, we've got friends in the city who can't find enough food, and we've got farmers who can't sell any of their animals or crops or milk right. or anything like that. So yeah, so the thing about it is, is that th this process is just as critical, you know, and this is essential. And these people, as we, a slaughterhouse is a great example. But you know, I can't shelter down. It was winter. I can't shelter down because I'm to stay home. <laughs> Those cows have to have hay. There, there's no grass here. Okay. So I have to have hay. I have to have feed. I have to go to the feed store. I have to be exposed. So that is part of the front line of this country. We, and so what happened was is that all got stopped. So and that's so that's kind of a little background on why this relief. But I can tell you personally, and I can tell you from, you know, as, now I'm going to switch gears. I'm going to switch from being a farmer and being a CPA, um, you know, a local CPA in a town of about 20,000 in, in the Ozarks. And we probably have four or 500 farmers from small to large. But they're all feeling the pain, you know, because they've got loans you know, and the banks have been very good about working with the farmers. I, I can say that. I think that's been very good. But the thing about it is, is I've got people that are like, am I going to survive? Mm -hmm. This is a help. This is almost like a shot in the arm to get through the next few weeks. But when we get to some of this, whenever I've got, you know, whenever I've got a, you know, a cow out there and when we get to the cattle part and I get $33 for the loss for the year. Do you know what a bell of hay cost? Do you know what that carrying cost to own the land, et cetera? That $33 is probably helping me out for about seven to 10 days of my total cost. That's truly, you know, I do numbers for farmers. And so we appreciate what we're getting, but don't, you know, when you, somebody says, well, look at this big number. Mm -hmm. You know, if, if I've got 500 cow-calf pairs right now, spring calving, if I've got 500 cows, I've got 500 calves. i got got 1,000 mouths to feed. And somebody goes, oh, here's 10,000 or here's 20,000. Mm -hmm. You know, my feed bill in January, just the supplements to the hay, was running about $2,000 a week. So that gives you kind of an idea. idea. Mm -hmm. So let's go on ahead and look at eligible livestock. Um and as I scan down through here, I first want to look at what qualifies. And so you see here on the screen, under the area of livestock, it's cattle, hogs, and sheep. And hogs, they divide into pigs under 120, hogs, and, and that's how I was raised. I was on a hog farm. And matter of fact, I still own the, the uh, hog houses uh, and, um, and have a lot of memories. But the hogs are normally large adult hogs, cattle or feeder cattle less than 600, um, or feeder cattle less than 600, feeder cattle greater than 600, slaughter cattle, which are fed cattle, and then slaughter cattle, which are mature cattle. That's going to be your cull, what we call cull cows. Uh, and then all other cattle. Um, so anyway, that, that's kind of your list. Now, when we get our chart on pricing, this is just to def for a definition. Once we go to the next screen, what we're going to actually be looking at is we're going to be looking based on this breakdown um, and going on with the sheep, lambs, and yearlings. What you're going to find out when we get to the breakdown, based on the type of, for example, under hogs, if it's a pig, you're going to get a different amount than if it's a hog. And again, there we're talking about you know, feed consumption, uh, what's the price of it, in the cattle area, an animal under 600 pounds, 
uh, versus an animal over 600 pounds, you're going to find that the, the, you, you, you have weight times price. And an animal under 600, you're not going to have near the cost. And that was part of this. You know, and looking through, I've, I've gone through all the, the I'm going to call them al- algorithms, but I've went through how they percentage and they looked at, because in, in this case, they're looking at actual sales between January 15th you know, and April 15th, and they're going to reimburse, the concept was 85% of the loss. And then they were going to go in the second and third quarter and look there. Well, they've based that on your highest inventory between April 15th and May 15th. So... And why they picked that, uh, as far as you, you'd already sold it before this law came out. So you can't go back and change your sales. Mm-hmm. So with that, what, what I'd like to do is now go on down and look at the pricing. So uh, as we look at it here on the screen, the payments, um, there, there is really two parts, part one, part two. And looking here at the screen, for the first part, the total sales of eligible livestock by species and class between January 15th, 2020 and April 15th, 2020 um, of owned inventory as of January 15th, including any offspring from that inventory. So when I mention a cow calf pair, the cow, and then the offspring is the calf. But the important thing is you had to own it. So here's the first rule I'm going through this chart. You had to own the animal as of January 15th. So if you bought something after that, it doesn't count. That's why earlier in the definition, it says eligible livestock. And then that's part one. Part two is the highest inventory of eligible livestock by species and class between April 16th and May 14th. And again, this kind of parallels when the law passed. You know, they're going to give you more money based on what has happened historically. And we're going to see that in the chart. So, so this. That, Oh, sorry. So this part one um, payment, that's going to be that um, 85% of what you've sold, correct? Yes. That's and, it's 85% of the estimated loss. Yeah, the estimated loss. Um, and, and the thing I liked about what they did here, you know, because at first we were thinking, do you have to go in with your sales receipts? And then they figured the differential between a market price and what you sold for. And that would be a little bit more accurate. But the cost of doing that would drive the cost of the program so high of all the additional work. So, again, I, that's where that what they came out with these prices. We're, we're going to go through them. I, please don't try to memorize them. They're here on the screen. I'm not going to go through every number through this presentation. I'm going to pick certain areas as examples. And, again, the livestock, I'm kind of using it as a focus because, again, it's related to what we've been seeing on the news but when I get to the others, like, for example, when I get to the wool, the wool's just pretty well defined. Hmm. You know, wool, Straight you know, a pound of wool is a pound of wool. But if you have a calf under 600 and a mm-hmm. calf over 600 and you have a slaughter feeder and you have a slaughter mature cow and then you have other cattle. And you start you paying dairy, attention. It's called, wait a minute, mm-hmm. you've got to really know, you know, mm-hmm. you've got to know what, what the difference is. Yeah. So let's go back here to the chart and I'm going to go through this. Let's look at cattle. It says feeder cattle less than 600 pound head unit. Now, as I referred to just a moment ago, it says Cures Act part one payment rate. And then the next column is CCC. And if you're in the farm world, you know what CCC is. So um, that's a regular payment method through to the farmer uh, through, um, you know, through farm services agents agency, I should say. So here's what happens. Under part one, if I sold an animal, because remember part one above, I'll just slide this up a little bit. Part one was between January 15th and April 15th of this year. If I sold that, then I would get a payment of $102 on the sale of that animal. Now, so let's say I had 20 uh, feeder cattle that was less than 600 pounds and I sold 10 of them during the period, and I kept 10 of them. What I would get is I would get 102 times 10 that I sold during the period. And then during April 16th to May 14th, I had those 10 through that period. That was the highest count. So then I would get 10 times $33. And then that would be my payment. So pretty straightforward. 
Um, as I mentioned earlier in the video, whenever they come out with the calculator, they've, they've got a little demo online in the calculator, but they go through it so fast. They click, it multiplies, it clicks, it multiplies. So what I've been doing is going back through, starting and stopping it and, and run their calculations. And I've compared it uh, because if you look at it, you just think, here's this number, but the $102 is actually 80% of another number, which is 80% of 85%. Here's my point. Don't get caught up in the detail. It's called, if you have an animal that qualifies and you sold it, you're going to get 102. And if you had an animal that qualifies that you didn't sell and you still have it in inventory on May 14th, you're going to get $33. So I've checked the numbers. I've checked the calculation. Um, I've, I've looked at their grid there, and it does. It, it adds up to what the law says. So, and then what you would do is going down the list, and this is, and they also have a, uh, an Excel spreadsheet they're going to have available to download. So you, you'll be able to do it online on the calculator. That's nice. Or you'll be able to do it through an Excel spreadsheet, uh, or you'll be able to do a phone call with somebody from from FSA, so so again, different avenues, different sources, but I think the important thing is to understand one the process and number two is these different classes. If I go on down, you can see that for example, if it's greater than six hundred pounds in part one, you're looking at one hundred and thirty nine dollars. And again, I looked at. Uh, without getting totally in the minutia, when I looked at how they did these calculations, they actually looked at the second and third quarter market from 19 and said, here's what the average was. And so in doing that, they said, you know, here's what it was during the period of COVID-19. And they took that difference and they said, here's the average difference based on average weight. So, um, like I said earlier, they could have gone to actuals, but for each sale and stuff. But I'm kind of glad they went this way because um, in tax law, this is almost like having a per diem. Mm -hmm. You know, you get 54 cents a mile. Mm -hmm. You know, your fuel cost and your automobile cost for some people might be 35 cents to other people right. might be 85 cents. You know, and they're they're not driving an old Chevy pickup like I am. They're driving a Rolls Royce. Well, we all get the same per diem. You know. It's to, it's to make impact faster. So you're going down through here. Um, you know, for example, slaughter cattle, mature cattle there, it's $92 versus fed cattle is 214 Why the difference? Is because the fed cattle, you're talking about cattle that weigh, you know, 1,000, 1,200 pounds, and their price, they're getting, they're, they're, those animals are where you get steaks. The, the slaughter cattle is where you get a lot of hamburger. But the slaughter cattle won't bring but about, they, they won't bring but probably 35, 40 cents on the dollar of what a fed, one of the fed cattle would. So when you look there, 214 versus 92, it's still, it's the weight's not that big a difference, but it's the price is that big a difference. So, Again, I went through these charts. I've kind of went through them. I've gone through corn and oats and went back and looked at you know second and third quarter last year, and and again their 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 numbers uh, are are pretty close, you know. So um, hogs and pigs, you can see there. Um, again, if you sold it and it was a pig like weighing less than one twenty, it's twenty eight dollars a head, and if it's if you still had it on hand, it's seventeen dollars. So. Again, I'm not going to go through all of these, but as you can see, uh, they're there. So kind of to move on through this, uh, what I want to want to do is I want to now jump over to non-specialty crops. And I'm just going to, instead of, you know, the intro, it lists all the different kinds of crops. What I really want to do is actually go to the chart because everybody knows what corn is. Mm. Everybody knows what oats look like, right? You know, so let's just go to the chart. And again, this is set up somewhat like the prior chart. And if we look here at the screen, we're going to say producers must provide the following information, you know, for the for this program: uh, total 2019 production, 
for commodities that suffered a 5% or greater price decline and the 2019 production that was not sold as of January 15th. So again, you've got to have records. If you've kept good documentation, you know, like for example, whenever we, what we call work cattle, you know, we worm, we, you know, vaccinate. When we do that, we're buying, you know, shots per animal. So each time we work them, we know how many cows, we know how many yearlings, we know how many calves mm -hmm. on that date. And we keep those records. Uh, in this case, you're going to have storage or you're going to have, you know, the, you're going to have the uh, sales records. So let's look at the two parts again. The Cures Act payment is going to apply against 50% of the unpriced inventory as of January 15th, 2020, not to exceed 50% of 2019 total production. Because if you're in this business, you had a crop last year. So let's look at the two parts to the payment, just as we had in cattle. We're going to get part from the CARES Act, the payment rate there, and then we're going to get it from what we call the CCC payment. In doing so, you can see here barley, for example. It's by bushel. It's $0.34 cents under the payment rate. Uh, if it's under the CCC payment, it's $0.37. Cents. And my takeaway here, if you look at these prices, here in this case is the fact that it doesn't matter. You're going to get approximately the same dollar or dollars or cents per bushel. You know, you look at, I'm going to jump down to corn. What's going to happen is under the Cures Act payment, you're going to get $0.32 cents a bushel of qualified bushels. And under the CCC payment, you're going to get $0.35. Cents. So there's not this big spread that you have over in into the cattle market. So again, I'm not going to go through all this. We got cotton, we, we got millet, oats, sorghum, soybeans, sunflower seed, wheat, and the charts there. So this area here, all you're going to do is go back and get your records, whether it's by bushel or by pound, and plug it into the calculator, and you're going to get a result. Can we talk a little bit about the dates? Because I know that the dates for specialty crop or non-specialty crops are a little bit different than um, the livestock. Okay, so it says a single payment will be made based on 50% of the producer's 2019 total production or 2019 inventory as of January 15th, 2020, whichever is smaller, multiplied by 50% and then multiplied by the commodity applicable payment rate. <laughs> Do you really want people on the YouTube to hear that? No, but what happens is in that case, when whenever if you've got your records, whenever you go to enter it in the calculator, they're, they're so they're going to ask you, they're going to ask you the producer's 2019 total production. They're going to ask you the 2019 inventory as of January 20th. They're going to take the lesser of that and multiply it by 50 percent, and then multiply it by the rate. So nobody needs to be scared by all these words that are on this page because all they need is those couple numbers and the calculator will figure it out for them. Yes. No, they don't I need to do a bunch of math and figure out right. all these different rates. Well, and when we do our, when we do the video on the calculator, we'll show you how to enter the numbers. Mm -hmm. But yeah, it comes down to it's a payment. So, and again, to go over, it's 50% of the producer's 2019 total production or the 2019 inventory is at January of 15. Uh, 2020, whichever is less. Now, the reason, so let's just stop right there. The reason for that is they don't want somebody to have two or three years of crops in storage mm -hmm. because that would not be correct. So the thing about it is they want to know what your 2019 production is. They want to know what 2019 storage is. And so if you've stored multi years, then it's going to be your 19 production. If you didn't store and you have some or less than in storage of your 19 production, then you're going to get that lesser number because you've already sold that much of your 19 crop. And then that will be multiplied by 50% and, and then taken by the number on the chart. So let's move on to the specialty crop area. And in this one, they've got three areas of calculating your loss. So looking here at the screen, the eligible uh, crops, number one had crops that suffered a 5% or greater price decline between mid-January and mid-April because of COVID-19. The second one had, had uh, 
uh, product shipped but subsequently spoiled due to marketing channels. In other words, it couldn't get through and it just sat you know, in the crate or the box and had shipments that did not leave the farm or mature crops that remained unharvested. So as we look at this chart here, there is three categories, which agrees to the three areas I just mentioned. So like almonds, they met the 5% decline. So that they got a check under category one. But apples, if you look at it, apples didn't have a 5% decline. So as a result, they don't qualify for the greater uh, for the 5% or greater decline. But they still qualify in case of spoiled um, because of the marketing channel. And they qualify because that it did not leave the farm or remained unharvested. So you can kind of look down through here. And as I jokingly said in the, the onset, the beginning, uh, actually, I grow a garden. You know, so yeah, I have beans and cabbage and cantaloupe and carrots and cauliflower. But you're not in the business of. But I'm not in the business. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> That's right. I have a can on the shelf. You know, mm -hmm. uh, I've got corn frozen in the refrigerator. But thanks, guys. I don't qualify. <laughs> For your own consumption. So, so, but again, pretty straightforward in this chart. Uh, um, and move on down through. Oh, see, for example, strawberries. I have ripe strawberries right now. Well, mm. that's from this year. Mm. So those strawberries are the 2020 harvest. So they wouldn't count. Shouldn't count. But, right. yeah, and I've got onions. I just picked some onions. I've got lettuce I'm picking. But again, mm. it's going to be consumed. That I'm, I'm not going to sell. <laughs> All right, let's move on down now and look at the, again, the payments. In this case, we have three parts as we did in our chart. So if you'll look, and I'll do a couple of these and then we'll move on. But almonds, remember it had a check mark in all three categories. So the first category, a market price decline. Because of that market price decline, there's going to be 26 cents uh, per pound. Uh, in the next category, again, uh, this one here is due to spoilage. It's 57 cents because you lost the whole crop. And then under the CCC payment rate, it's going to be 11 cents. Let's move next and look at apples and see there in the first column, there's a dash because it did not have a 5% decline. But because these specialty crops are, are perishable, say they don't last very long. That's why they're in here. So in, in that case, apples is 18 cents a pound and then the ccc payment is three cents i don't want to bore you with going through every one of these these are the charts you can see them i'm gonna move on through them uh, kind of thumb down through here like grapefruit kiwi they were they did not have a five percent drop but yet if you had damaged goods it's 32 cents for a kiwi uh, and the reason why i say that is my daughter Playing sports, um, kiwi was kind of her go-to special fruit, close to strawberries. But that was your energy drink, I guess. So. <laughs> no, tubs was, and tubs of fruit. It was, it was tubs and tubs of fruit. So, um, and there's the onions, but I don't, I don't qualify. So, again, here it's quite extensive list. Um, so it's there. Let's move on real quick and do a, a stop at dairy. And there, what happens is there's a single payment. There's no chart here. And what's going to happen is, is that uh, a single payment we made based on the producer's certification of milk produced for the first quarter of calendar year 2020 multiplied by $4.71 per hundredweight. The second part of that payment is based on the national adjustment for each producer's production in the first quarter and multiplied by $1.47. And I do some dairies. Every gallon of milk is tracked. So again, when we get the calculator, you'll just you're, you're going to put in the hundred weight, and it's going to you know, it, it'll it'll take care of it. Backing on up, let's look at our last topic, and that's wool. And there, what's going to happen? They're going to be ba paid based on inventory subject to price risk uh, that was held January fifteenth, twenty twenty. That payment will be based on 50% of the producer's 2019 total production or the 2019 inventory as of January 15th, whichever is smaller. 
that kind of follows the same trend that I explained earlier. It's called they will pay 50% of whatever you have held over on January 15th, limited to your 2019 production. So pretty, again, pretty straightforward. And there you can see two types of wool. Grade wool is going to be two payments. One's going to be 71 cents uh, under the Cures Act. The CCC payment's going to be 78 cents. And then non-grade wool, greasy base, is going to be 36 cents and 39 cents. And again, there you can see a very consistent, very easy calculation. So with that, I just want to wrap up. I hope this kind of helps, give some reason why. But here, as soon as we get the calculator out and the Excel spreadsheet, we're going to be doing a video on that. And we'll come back and we'll do you know, a couple live examples so you can do it at home. That's going to help a lot. Yeah, please subscribe so that when we do post it, you're going to get that video on that calculator as fast as we can get it out. And, and, and again, it starts, you know, May 26th through August 28th. Um, and in doing so, we get the calculator out there. So you can run through the numbers before you call or contact or go online to, you know, farm service agent. And uh, with that, I hope this really helps. Uh, John, Laura, thank you. And uh, we'll see you in the next video. Sounds good. See you guys later. <laughs> oh, yes.